Okay, this is the first time for this workshop. My name is Matthew Radcliffe. I am a mentor in the Drupal project, as well as a mentor and coordinator for the Drupal project. Uh, today we will uh, talk about how to... Uh, how, we, how we can contribute back to the Drupal project and all the ways that we can do that. So we're going to talk about why can contribution is important, uh, what are the benefits of contributing, uh, the types of contributions you can make back to the Drupal project, uh, some of the initiatives that are going on, which is an excellent opportunity for you to join the community, uh, and then go over some of the uh, nitty gritty of the issue queue and a little bit about tooling if we have a uh, remaining time. So who are you? As in uh, this room, we are, could be new to the world of Drupal. Uh, you could have been using Drupal forever, for many years, but have never done um, any contribution back to the project. Uh, or looking for new ways to help out. Maybe uh, in marketing, and you're looking into getting into code, or vice versa. Uh, and, you know, if you're here and you're you have not worked out worked with the, the new processes is for contribution because we're always evolving uh, how we contribute back to Drupal. Uh, so basically, any one of those people that that's who you are, that's who I am, always looking for uh, new ways to contribute. So uh, as you know, Drupal is an open source project, so we depend on uh, people like ourselves to uh, give back to the community. Uh, so your contributions are valued and you can make meaningful contributions to open source software. Uh, contributing also makes you um, more integrated into the community. Uh, so you can feel not just like an outsider, but be a part of the family, the Drupal family. Excuse me, as I'm trying to make sure I'm not going too fast here. So the, um, you know, if you're part of an agency or organization, uh, it's important to, um, organizations also benefit from, uh, from our contributions. And uh, since Drupal depends on sharing, uh, being, you know, being a good organization is allowing uh, your members, your employees, uh, to contribute back to the project. Uh, and it's also helpful as you, as an organization, uh, if you have people who are contributing, they become well known in the community. It makes it easier to recruit talent. Um, and again, people love attending community events. So, sending sending uh, your members and your, your employees to con to contribution events uh, uh, makes them happy. Makes me happy. Uh, so to start out, the very first thing for any type of contribution it is to have a Drupal.org user account. Uh, in the last two weeks, this process has changed a little. It's still at this URL, going to Drupal.org. Uh, you can click, you can click the icon in the upper right-hand corner to access the user register menu. Um, and that's still the same, but it's a little, it's going through a new process. If you haven't logged into Drupal.org in, in the last two weeks, uh, we actually all have to change our passwords. So, um, <laughs> if you haven't been to Drupal.org, um, make sure you go through that process because we have changed a little bit. Uh, once you create your, your Drupal.org user account, uh, it's really important to fill out your profile to tell a little bit about yourself uh, for other people in the community. So I'm going to encourage people to add a profile picture if you're comfortable with that. Um, adding uh, your work profile, social links, uh, who's, who's one of your mentors um, in the community, if you know other people in the community who have mentored you in the past. Uh, and your profile page is kind of like a resume of your contributions, um, not just code contributions, but community contributions, event organization, uh, that, uh, that you've done. So it's kind of really important to, to fill out that profile. Um, and then the next important thing is to join the community where the community is. So in the past we used IRC, 
uh, a very scary thing for, for some of us. Uh, now the community organizes on Drupal Slack instance, and it's really important to go to this URL here to join Drupal Slack if you're not already a part of it. Uh, we have a special registration process, so when you go to uh, Drupal or Slack, uh, it'll tell you to join Slack and you know, accept the code of conduct and you know, joining um, the channels. There's a lot of uh, channels listed on there. Uh, here is uh, the first contribution channel. Um, first typing contribution. Uh, this is the place for uh, newcomers to, to gather at contribution events, uh, to ask questions, um, be a friendlier, um, maybe less intimidating if you, if you just leap right into the contribute channel uh, where things or discussions are flying back and forth. Um, this is, you know, you can join this channel first and say hi, uh, someone like myself, a uh, mentor, and they pop in and, and say hi back and help you out each other. Um, as new, newcomers to open source projects, it, the research has shown that as you work, working together uh, is, is better for um, staying with a project. And I just want to reiterate that you can still contribute without coding. And we, can, and we can make meaningful contributions to the project without ever writing code. Uh, so, one of these types of contributions that are non code contributions include documentation and improving documentation, triaging issues, so you know, using project management skills to, to identify tasks uh, on issues. Uh, going through and testing issues, you know, using our testing and testing skills, QA skills, um, to to help move an issue forward, uh, you know, is a, you know, that's one way of helping to uh, to move the project forward. One of the newer initiatives of uh, in the last two years, the, uh, there are two. There's a review queue initiative which goes through issues that are older issues that need review and see if they still. Uh, are in the uh, and then again, uh, just an example of that issue triage bullet point. Uh, providing translations is really important because we want Drupal to be accessible to a wide, uh, you know, as diverse of a community as we can throughout the world. Uh, so providing uh, uh, translations for core and contrib modules uh, is important. Reviewing content on Drupal.org. Uh, is also a valid contribution. Marketing, um, there's an uh, initiative called the Promote Drupal Initiative, the Drupal Ambassador Program. These are all places we can use our marketing skills to contribute back to the project. Uh, event organization, helping to run uh, DrupalGovCon is a valid contribution to the Drupal project because we're gather, gathering the community here and meeting and sharing knowledge is really important. And then sharing knowledge and mentoring is also a contribution. Giving this talk is a form of contribution. <laughs> if you want or you're interested in talking about contribution, you can talk to me. Uh, I'm like, uh, so what about code contribution? If you're interested in code, um, we can test experimental features, uh, creating merge requests, uh, testing merge requests on issues, and and providing screenshots and QA, feedback, uh, code, code reviews, uh, are all part of the contribution process. Let's talk a little bit more about documentation. So there is a lot of different documentation on Drupal. Uh, we'll cover that briefly. So there's the Drupal documentation guides. These are official guides, are governed by maintainers. Um, and held to an established standard through the editorial process. And you can jump in to most of these guides and uh, either review the content, make changes, and you're welcome to do so. Uh, uh, maintainers are really appreciative of anyone who helps um, write and update the documentation. I would love it if anybody who's knowledgeable in the type data API could help the type data API documentation. Many people know it. Uh, I maintain that guide. It's a, if you've ever looked at it, 
you know, maybe you sold some TBDs in there from Triple Eight. <laughs> so we were very appreciative of, of, of people who can jump in there. Uh, there's also uh, the curated, curated guide. So if you're not familiar with the Drupal.org user guide, which I'm I love the Drupal.org user guide. It's a uh, ASCII doc, so it's a kind of code-based documentation uh, for uh, uh, learning how to use Drupal. Uh, when I'm training people, I start them off at that user guide, and so it's important to contribute back to it to, to help uh, newcomers learn how to build awesome digital experiences. Uh, there's also uh, guides that, are, that the community has created um, that, again, that, that are free to edit um, and are less uh, hierarchical about the editing process and the approval process for the documentation. Uh, you'll see those in the contrib space. And, if you, and these are denoted by any time when you're logged in, you see that green edit icon, uh, pencil icon, green button, uh, labeled edit. Uh, those are part of those pages. Whereas if you don't see the green edit button, then uh, that documentation page you know, has a specific project that, and a process to go through. And, 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 uh, just the mention of the uh, the, con the contributor. So, you know, part of giving this talk is, you know, you know, having documentation about giving this talk and about how to mentor people, how to contribute, how. So we have contribution. A valid contribution is documenting how to contribute. In, in that, that meta sense, so, uh, and also an excellent place to jump in to to edit documentation. And of course, contrib modules um, may, if you know, downloading a contrib module, not all of us have documentation guides, or you know, sometimes we don't ever read it, and you have to go digging for it, right? So, uh, contributing back to the contrib space, um, right, guys? That's also a type of documentation. Uh, there's also Drupal uh, specific documentation. So, how do you find things in Drupal? Improving Drupal.org uh, is really important, you know, and an important uh, contribution. Uh, so there's a, a whole bunch of Drupal.org projects from uh, controlling spam to improving other pages, marketing pages, module pages. Uh, so that is on this Drupal.org documentation. Again. So how would one uh, get started on the translation space? So if you go to localize.drupal.org, this is where the translations are pulled when you install Drupal in a different language or install uh, a language onto your site. It's going to go to this URL and pull the, the uh, it's going to pull the uh, translations directly from there. Uh, to get started there, when you're on that site as a registered user, you can join a team. And then each team has a process uh, in both English, usually in English and in the native language, and to help translate and review translations and discuss translations. Uh, you can also apply to be you know, you know, joining that team and learning how it works and, and becoming a moderator for helping future translators. I talk about the Promote Drupal initiative. So this is a, a marketing-specific initiative. Uh, they organize on Slack, but also you can see that, that uh, in the community section of Drupal, you know, the Promote Drupal initiative. I'm actually going to go back. Uh, uh, so the Promote Drupal initiative, uh, just to go into a little bit more detail, um, provides marketing materials about how a Drupal agency or Drupal organization can market Drupal to potential clients, right? So if we have a unified open source documentation on how to do it, we can become stronger about how Drupal is awesome. <laughs> and so 
this is really important. This is a really important initiative to join if you have the skills to join it and provide you know, updated graphic designs and slides. You know, so when Dries announced Starshop initiative, you know, suddenly we need to update our marketing material, right? So there is a whole bunch of uh, new tasks and issues created to update the the uh, internal tools to update uh, marketing materials. Uh, the Drupal Ambassador Program is um, you know, a way for you to contribute to go out into non-Drupal spaces and to uh, share uh, articles uh, on social media and talk about and talk about Drupal in non-Drupal spaces and promote uh, also um, to news organizations, and press releases. Uh, the Drop Times uh, is an interesting, you know, community-led. Um, I mean, not real part of the ambassador program, but it is is a very similar program for you know writing uh, articles and news articles about Drupal that can be published in actual news and media organizations. The other you know places where you can use your marketing and related uh, skills, um, being a project lead, uh, writing skills, designing skills, videography skills, these are all needed in, in these marketing initiatives. Uh, the Drupal recording initiative, which is how we're able to record these sessions in the back of the room. There's a little red light if you turn your head, if, you, if, you, if you're able to, to see. Um, that, you know, that someone, you know, Kevin, uh, spent a lot of time to, to create this program for the Drupal recording initiative. Uh, and it's not just a one and done deal. You know, we need to we need people to contribute back to that initiative and, and continue uh, providing the, the that uh, documentation. Uh, so, what are Drupal strategic initiatives? So, this has changed in the last three months since Drupal found Portland and the Starshot initiative. Uh, Drupal Starshot was announced. So. Strategic initiatives are now Drupal Starshot. When you go look for strategic initiatives, you're going to find Drupal Starshot. And what is Drupal Starshot? Uh, there is a session um, either today or tomorrow, I think it's tomorrow, right, by Mike Hirschman, who goes all into Starshot, Starshot initiative, Drupal Starshot, and what makes it. Makes it. Uh, but to go over briefly, we have the automatic updates initiative. Uh, this has been going on for a few years. It's a really complex uh, initiative uh, requiring a lot of in-depth technical knowledge about security practices and how to how do we make Drupal you know our updating process in Drupal seamless and secure. Uh, so this you know is an initiative. If you're interested in that, you can join that initiative. Uh, joining an initiative is. One of the better ways of getting started, uh, since you have direction, you can hop into the Drupal Slack. Again, joining Drupal Slack. Third slide there, after creating a user account, it's really important to join the community there. Um, hopping into a channel, finding um, the, these Slack meetings are called asynchronous meetings. So you don't necessarily have to start, be there at a time, in the time zone that the, the initiative leads are. Uh, but you can join in, you know, several hours afterwards. You know, usually 24 hours. These discussions can can run, and they have agendas that you know people are going to be talking about. And so, and, and they're you know weekly to bi-weekly to monthly meetings. Uh, so the experience uh, builder initiative is a new initiative that kind of goes and take, tries trying to take layout builder and really improve that. So there's a lot of uh, rapid development happening in this initiative. Uh, I think it also includes um, tied to the recipes initiative uh, and uh, some of the uh, including contrib module space uh, as well into Drupal Starship. Uh, another initiative that is, you know, um, needs help um, from design skills and uh, Writing skills is the project browser initiative. So, you know, Drupal has a module listing page, and we're trying to improve that experience for installing and finding modules. 
Uh, you know, we've created a lot of project logos, but there's a lot of Drupal control modules that can use our help to create logos. Uh, I think I had I had a couple myself that I need logos for. I, I am not as the designer. Uh, that's why I asked um, in one of my control modules, I, I put out a create an issue saying, hey, I, I need some help I'm trying to create a logo for my the agreement module. I, I don't want it to be, like, a, I need it to be um, kind of generic, and but still indicative of what an agreement or a terms of service could be. Uh, and someone came in and, and contributed um, that. I was really, really thankful and appreciative of, of that work. Uh, so that helps with the project browser issue. Uh, the rest of these initiatives. Uh, so this is, again is relatively new, new in the last year since Pittsburgh, Drupal uh, Pittsburgh, to take distributions and instead of having a static distribution, have you know have recipes that you can start with and combine to create. And then again, this is wrapped from the Star Shop, Drupal Star Shop, where you can have these better out of the box experiences with Drupal. Uh, really important for. Um, for organizations and, and people who are creating lots of sites, multi-sites, you know, kind of that idea of creating creating a, a bunch of different sites that people can customize but still have the same brand. The uh, oh, there are a lot of community issues. So Starshot is kind of top down what Dries is, is thinks you know what the Drupal community wants, uh, but we also have other needs. So the bug smash initiative, uh, that that one has been about trying to like fix all these bugs in Drupal and seeing if they're even applied anymore. So they meet and they look through the issue queue and if you like testing things and like figuring things out things, how things work and issue triage skills, it's a really cool initiative. Um, also paired with that new needs review queue initiative uh, right below it. Uh, accessibility uh, is a community-led initiative for identifying um, accessibility gaps in in Drupal projects and Drupal core, and, and talking about things. One thing recently it's in research phase is drag and drop. Um, a lot of people like drag and drop; it's not always accessible, uh, and it's really important that we make accessible drag and drop interfaces. The configuration management and core 2.0 initiative. Is another community-led initiative uh, to improve configuration management. If you're interested in that, the Drupal Open Curriculum Initiative uh, is about learning, you know, providing open tools for learning Drupal. Uh, kind of like that curated user guide, but you know, expanded. There, the uh, the documentation and help initiative uh, is focused on again related to that, focusing on public help, uh, contribution events, and the event organizer working group. Um, are about you know, helping people and helping your local communities host Google events. Uh, we also have the community working group. Uh, this is, a, if you're not aware of what the community working group does, um, they help uh, draft the code of conduct and uh, uh, review code of conduct and, and be a point of contact for, for, for people looking for help. And they also um, you know, engage community health, and they're um, part of the community that, that looks into the Aaron Winborn Award every year. Uh, it's a you know small group, but you know they're looking. You know they're always a place for 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 helping out in the community working group. Um, yeah, it's non non code things. If you have, they they also have uh, sessions regularly to learn how to. To learn how to, how to uh, be uh, and uh, contact for a code of conduct. The Drupal Diversity and Inclusion Group is, uh, uh, has provided resource libraries and a uh, safe space for, for people to contribute. Uh, they have um, the DDI, DDNI Speaker Initiative to help uh, provide a you know, less of a bias for speakers and to promote a diverse, uh, a diverse speaker uh, at events like this. Uh, 
Uh, we have the Drupal Core Ideas Project. So here's where, if you have an idea about Drupal, this is kind of where it begins. Um, Drush and Core, uh, CLI and Core, they all started in this Ideas Project before I think the Drush and Core one got moved into the Drupal Core project recently. Um, Alvero, for writing a brand new theme, started in the Ideas Project. So if you have this idea of like, Drupal could really use X or Y, this is where we start planning things in this Ideas Project. Okay, so if you want to join one of these initiatives, you want to look into a documentation page, a curated guide, or a triple control module, you're going to need to know about the issue here. Uh, so we want to start small. You know, jump into a large issue can be very intimidating. Um, you know, reporting issues is a, a good way to start. You know, reporting what you found, um, updating issues, triaging issues. Uh, again, uh, if an issue is in a certain status, um, in creating a merge request and providing code into that merge merge request um, for something that has a clearly defined task and resolution and reviewing code and testing. So, uh, for the Drupal core issue queue, uh, if you go to um, the Drupal core project and there's issues there, you want to click on the advanced issues usually. I think this is a little hard to read from screenshots, but yeah, the left left side, or right side, depending on who you're looking, is the dual project page, and then you can go click on the issues to find the issue queue. Uh, there's a short link for how to find novice issues. Uh, this is the term that Drupal used uh, before GitHub came up with the term good first issue, which is uh, now kind of the de facto standard for finding a first issue, but we still are looking for novice issues. This is where to find those. These are issues that are have that clearly defined task or should have a clearly defined task uh, or a tag that has, says that, that needs to happen. So like needs issue summary update is one of those. And again, uh, if you go to the issue queue, you don't have these drop downs um, on this page. What we really want is advanced search because it provides a little bit more. Uh, uh, provides a, a better interface for finding issues. So uh, you won't find the tags uh, auto complete there in, in advanced issues, which is how we can find these, these novice or issues that, that, that have fully defined tasks. So when we're looking at these issues, so there's a, some issues to avoid when we're looking for issues to work on our projects that aren't actively maintained. So if the maintainer is, has lapsed and we're busy, um, you know, you're not gonna get uh, feedback on your issue uh, for, for a while. And it's really important that we give and get, get feedback uh, when you're contributing, contributing for the first time. Um, issues that are really old can seem inviting, like, oh, I'll just work on an older issue. I thought this way for a long time. Uh, and, but really, you know, issues that are fresh are easier to have more discussion. Uh, they're fresh in people's minds. Uh, issues with less than 20 comments are usually um, or, or have more than 20 comments are going to be issues that are, they might be divisive, they might have lots of things going on, or confusing, intimidating. So finding an issue with less comments uh, can be easier to get started. Um, things where an issue, you see an issue ping pong between, or switch back and forth between needs work, needs review, needs work, needs review. Those can also be a little bit intimidating because maybe that 
the task to do that novice task isn't actually uh, defined. Uh, so those, that would be an issue to avoid. Um, critical issues that are usually you know, intimidating. If you don't have help or a mentor with you who knows the process, try and avoid critical uh, and major issues. Again, not necessarily if you have a dedicated team, you can ask for help. You know, critical and majors can, can be um, good novice issues as well. Uh, we used to use patches on Drupal, and you might still see patches. Uh, but for the most, for, we have pretty much switched to using merge requests um, and the merge request workflow offered by GitLab. Uh, so when you go into an issue, instead of uploading or creating a patch file, we're going to create an issue fork and a merge request. So on an issue, uh, we can break down that issue into a title, a category. The category is um, I mean, whether it's a bug or a feature or a plan or an idea or a uh, task. So a bug and a, a feature are going to be kind of clearly defined things to work on. A task uh, is going to be an issue that um, has some kind of routine thing that needs to be done in core or in trim. So updating lots of different little files is a task, not a bug or a feature, rather adding new one, something new to Drupal is a feature, and, and a bug is, is fixing a defect and something that's found. The status is really important, that's how we uh, track uh, when an issue can be committed. So there is an issue status called reviewed and tested by the community, reviewed and tested by the community, um, short Showing to RTBC, and so we were trying to, when we're working on an issue, where the end goal is to get it to RTBC, and when, and that's at that point, kind of our involvement stops. That indicates that we've dotted our eyes across our T's. That issue has a good issue summary that a core committer can come in, read the issue summary. It's clear the proposed resolution is there. The proposed resolution matches the merge request, code changes, and and so then they, they have it makes it their job easier for getting things into core. Uh, tags, the tags on an issue are important for identifying these tasks and common tasks as well as whether an issue is worked on at a current event. Um, event tag should never be removed, uh, but if an issue is tag needs issue summary update, but someone's already done it. You know, though that's a tag that you can go and remove. Right, if tests have been added, needs tests that are there. Yes. Skip to the issue summary. So the issue summary part of an issue is again that really important part. So sometimes when we create issues, we don't have this metadata. We don't have this this metadata here, this template, um, and you know, we're creating an issue, so we might create an issue quickly, it might be one sentence. Um, so those issues that need issue summary update, um, you know, if, if they don't have that tag, you know, adding that template and on the issue itself, it will tell you how to get to that issue summary template and adding it in. Uh, this is probably a task that is going to change on how to do it when we switch over fully to GitLab issues. Uh, again, we want to make sure we're you know, filling out as much as we can when we're doing it um, and putting like an A, not a clue for sections of the issue summary that, that don't uh, meet the criteria. Uh, there are a bunch of different issue summary templates um, uh, for different types of things. But there's one kind of standard one that, that we use, I'd probably stick to that. You can, there's a page on Drupal that has a whole bunch of different issues in multiple place. Uh, when to, if you, to understand whether you should do an issue summary, um, 
the first thing to do is to kind of look at the current issue summary, see if it makes sense, if anything's missing, and then look at the comments, the last comment, and kind of read from there to see if um, you understand what's going on on the issue and what the current state is accurate. We want to make sure that the issue again, has clear and concise statements, uh, isn't vague. So, uh, you know, editing issue summary, you know, we do need some, uh, you know, good English skills or writing skills uh, to use. So, if you're a little struggling with that, um, you know, maybe we want to avoid those types of tasks. be aware of uh, when we're on an issue, we're following, people follow this issue, so if you look at on the right side of the issue where the metadata is, the follow button, uh, if it's a green field star, we're following the issue, and you can see how many people are following that issue, so we want to be aware that when you're following an issue, you're going to get an email that sort of makes a comment or changes the status, so we just be aware of that sort of thing. We want to uh, be transparent in what we're doing. So when you're first, you're first contributing, you know, be clear about what you're attempting to do on that issue. So I am here at GoCom. I found this issue. It needs an issue summary. I'm going to try and update the issue summary uh, for the first time. I'm in the first contribution channel in Slack. Those are all you know, a good statement to use for you know, working on an issue. Uh, Clearly shows you know being transparent about who we are and what we're trying to do. Uh, you know, uh, 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 saying confirmed as a one sentence, single word sentence uh, isn't as transparent. As we should try and avoid that. Uh, the, those types of comments. Uh, more into issue key etiquette. Uh, I'm going to kind of go through this a little fast. This is running out of time. to you know, make sure the issue is in the right project, uh, read any relevant documentation, investigate the issue already been, uh, that has already been fixed in the latest version, and we try and get help from the community on Slack uh, and on the issue here. You know, we want to search the issue here for any duplicate issues first to see if someone's already provided, and uh, you know, make that good faith effort uh, there are a lot of issues on Drupal, so it's not always possible to find that issue, uh, depending on language. Uh, we want to be as, you know, provide that full description of the issue you can, and if you, before, when you finish what you're doing, even if you're not having finished, come back to that issue and, and report on it. Make sure that we're, it's clear that we're finished working on that issue. Uh, for the day, for the week, forever. Report if something has worked. Uh, guidelines on tagging. Uh, we want to make sure we use the autocomplete functionality so we're not creating tags. This is Drupal taxonomy. When you, uh, if, you, if you create your tags very easily. Uh, so we want to make sure we use that autocomplete uh, to, to select a uh, previously created tag when possible. There is an assigned dropdown which only has your name or the, or the names of maintainers on an issue. Usually, the, we want to avoid using the assign unless we're specifically in the control space. In Drupal Core, the way to assign yourself to an issue is basically to call and say, hey, I'm, I'm going to work on this issue. Because it's down there at the bottom, people will read it when they come to the issue. Uh, and it's easy to forget to unassign yourself. So, we want to avoid using that. And if you're already an established contributor, please do leave non-established issues to newcomers and uh, first contributors. Oh, I, I skipped that slide, I'm sorry. Uh, some things to avoid. Uh, don't report security issues directly on the issue queue. Uh, there is a big warning when you go to create an issue, saying so if it's a security issue, please do use the specific security. So we want to make sure that it goes through security review first. Uh, 
don't hijack other issues. Uh, you can maybe write a comp saying running something similar. Is this the same? You know, asking and then asking for help is important. Um, and you know, I want to just confirm it works for me. Give some more detail. Be transparent when you do market as reviewed and tested by the community. Um, avoid changes. You know, just simple text that markdown file changes. This has become an issue for some control maintainers who, who are getting a lot of these changes in their modules and they struggle to to uh, uh, to do it. So if if a maintainer is comfortable with these types of changes, you know, go ahead and do it. Again, being transparent is important. And don't change an issue from fixed to closed fixed. Uh, that is a process that happens automatically. Uh, don't open a merge request without actually committing code to it. Uh, and again, don't create an empty fork. Uh, don't create a merge request for a closed issue or a fixed issue. Uh, if it's uh, an issue for a backport, Previous version of Drupal, create a new issue. Uh, lastly, on the use of AI, uh, we want to be transparent. If you use AI tools to create content, um, we need to be transparent that we have used AI and for that purpose. Uh, I mean, you know, it can be uh, advantageous to go and ask ChatGPT to write code or to write documentation. Um, we want to, we don't want to just, we want to make sure that whoever is committing that code knows that that is AI generated. So it goes to the Okay, um, I'm going to skip the development tools, but there is a page on Drupal.org called Drupal.org slash tools um, that offers uh, several ways to get started for different tasks. Uh, the, the one that we recommend is called Drupal Mod. And it is a DDEB instance in the cloud. So you don't have to install anything on your computer. All you need is a web browser uh, and a Drupal user account and a GitHub user account. And you can use uh, this awesome tool uh, called DDEB in your browser. So you can have a fully running Drupal instance in the browser to test an issue. There's a browser extension. Um, the project page for Drupal Pod is on Drupal. Now, so that you can search Drupal.org for DrupalPod and find it. Uh, again, if you have, again, we use DrupalPod uh, to avoid downloading lots and lots of files um, and, and overloading networks and events like these. Um, but since DrupalPod just uses DDEV in the underneath, you can install DDEV, and if you're comfortable with DDEV, um, you can ask like, uh, around. Um, you can, and if you're comfortable with having Docker installed on your computer, you can have that allowed by your organization, go ahead and you can set up that local environment uh, with DDEV as well. Uh, Tugboat and Simply Test Me are also around as, you know, for QA purposes, for quickly testing uh, merge requests. Uh, again, I, I actually recommend using Drupal to do that as well. Uh, again, because you have that full environment and you're going to things. But Simply Test Me, uh, has been an amazing tool for, for QA and for evaluating projects. Again, this is a little bit more about Drupal, uh, Drupal Pod. Uh, I'll just pause here for a moment. Uh, yeah, again, I recommend that there's a Drupal Pod web extension uh, that if you're on a Drupal Pod or a page, uh, it automatically pops up. Um, or you click the icon and you can choose the merge request issue fork um, to launch into a watch. You choose whether to launch into 11, 10, and so on. Okay. I am out of time. Um, so, um, kind of ending here, there's a uh, contribution video on YouTube that you can watch. And if you'd like to, to read in video form, or sorry, sorry, uh, learn in video form, you can. You can go here, and I'll have these slides as well on the session on this page. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm tapping my phone and, and not the clicker. Uh, 
there's a lot of resources on the Drupal.org. Um, again, uh, these we probably will be of interest to you in when the slides are so shared. Lastly, uh, thanks for coming to the first time to Drupal workshop. I'm Matthew Radcliffe again. I'm a senior software developer consultant for a small uh, company called Masala. Uh, we do, uh, you know, Drupal agents in Drupal shop. But my role in the Drupal community is, again, as a mentoring coordinator for the Drupal project, so trying to uh, encourage you to, kind of, to contribute back to the project, encourage you to mentor each other, uh, and join us mentoring. If you're interested in mentoring, I'm going to have a birds of a feather session tomorrow at uh, 4, 4 p.m. here, uh, just down the hall, uh, where if you're interested in mentoring uh, you know, people in your organization, Becoming a mentor at Drupal events you know, can be, we offer scholarships for getting to DrupalCon. Uh, so it's one of the ways you can get to DrupalCon as being a mentor. Uh, yeah, uh, please do come if you're interested in mentoring. Yeah. And there. Thank you.